All right, chip of the day. This is by viewer request. Um, he was perusing the internet, and uh, uh, I don't know where he bought his, but uh, I bought this on AliExpress. It's a funny little module. It's got uh, four pins on it, two grounds, one in, one out. And uh, it is sold as an over-voltage protection circuit. And uh, I think it's sold as a two and a half amp device, but it's hard to find any literature on this thing, uh, but they're super cheap. They're like 50 cents, about five of them for uh, nothing, right? They're like 50 cents a piece, maybe even less than that. Um, a little board. Um, they're so small, I'll, I'll put it under the microscope here, and you can see that there's a part. It's actually um, a little ball grid array. I'll show you a picture later, but um, there's a couple pins on it, and there's an input-output, some resistors. There's a, there's a little LED that lights up, um, and yeah, so... Um, Let's, 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 so like I said, you can't find a data sheet on this thing, but I think I found an equivalent data sheet, something very, very, very similar. So we'll go with that today. Okay, so the chip of the day is something like a FPF2286UXC, UCX, or something like a KTS1670, I don't know. It's, it's something like these. So they're a funny little package, a little, like a six pin ball grid array. And um, they are over voltage protection. This one's good for four amps. And this one is good for three amps. These were sold as two and a half amps. So who knows what part that is. Um, so uh, they, they're, they look something like this, okay? Where you have an input, ignore the diode here. There's a capacitor on the input, capacitor on the output. That's what we have on this one. There's a resistor divider. That's what we have on this one. And then it sends it from input to output. And so that's what we got here. In fact, I drew a picture of it, of what we got. This is what we got. There's actually a, um, an LED in here as well, but this is what we have. So there's input, output, a couple of capacitors. And then it monitors the voltage here on a pin and it has an internal reference. And so it can monitor, monitor the voltage, whatever you have it set here. So it's kind of like a regulator, but it's like a dropout regulator. If it gets, if it gets too high, it just shuts it off. So internally, you can kind of imagine that internally uh, there is a, an FET in here, okay? And that FET is controlled by some, some type of monitor circuit, right? And uh, that monitor circuit uh, has some voltage reference inside. And if this thing gets too big or too small, it turns this, uh, it turns this guy off. So over voltage protection, so if it gets too big, it turns this guy off. So that's, that's the thing we got here. So uh, the amount of current that it can pass depends on the on resistance of that uh, FET because it's a tiny little part with no heat sink on it. So if you have a very low ohms, you know, say 0.02 ohm resistance FET, then you can still draw two amps and, and it won't draw much, um, it won't get hot very, very much. So that's what's inside these things. Let's take a look at data sheets. Um, this thing says it can be used between 2.7 and 3.30. Uh, here's the circuit, like I said. Um, I've got a Band-Aid on my finger. I was sharpening kitchen knives and got carried away. Uh, let's see here. What else we got going on? I don't think there's much to see in the data sheet. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so the uh, these will do under under voltage as well. So if they get too big, they turn off. If they get too small, they turn off. All right, and uh, let's see any other thing in here. Yeah, here's a here's a good uh, here's a good block diagram. So we're bringing in some unknown some voltage, it gets compared, it gets compared with the division of the input as well. There's an internal band gap reference and so it can look for things. Um, and then there's a, 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 a P-channel FET, that, so it has a charge pump so it can create a voltage higher than whatever is coming in to, to turn on that, that uh, P-channel FET. 
and there's actually thermal shutdown as well. So there you go, pretty fancy part. But I don't know if that's the part that's in here. <laughs> Let's look at this data sheet. Kind of the same thing. Same type of package, same type of circuit. I think everybody in the brother makes these things, so I don't think they're they're too fancy of a part. Um, supply voltages, yada yada yada. Uh, yeah, the, th the set threshold is 1.19 volts on this one. So that's what that string divider, that re resistive divider. Uh, then it, you set it up to be around 1.2 volts, where you want it to trip. And uh, yes, uh, a lot of uh, yada yada in here. So you can read data sheets like that. Uh, again, those are the two, the two part numbers that I found that are very, very similar to whatever parts being used in here. Now see, this one says it's 60 milliohms on, right? So that's why it can handle the high current, 60 milliohms. And this one is, does it say on the front here? It doesn't say on the front, but anyway, you get the idea. It's very, very low ohms. Okay, so I say that we hook one up and make it go. All right, we have it hooked up here. Uh, the chip is down there. I have a, a 10 ohm load on it, so I'm drawing half an amp. And so we have a half an amp coming in through here. Here's the input and the output. We'll monitor it with oscilloscope, input, output. And like I said, half an amp. Um, and uh, so if we take a look at the oscilloscope, I've got two traces. And they're both on top of one another because once the input, once the output, we have 4.9, 4.9 volts. We'll raise it up, raise it up, 3.4, 5 5, oh, at 5.5, bang, the output just fell. So 5.5 was the trip voltage on the high side. And if I bring it down, we can go lower and lower and lower. 3.4, 3.2, 3.1, Oh, right around 2.8, bang, it falls off as well. So the high point was about 5.5, low point was about 2.8. And uh, let me show you the board. Uh, you can barely see that the LED is on. And that is in its trip condition. If I raise the voltage back up to five volts, the LED turns off. So the LED turns on when there's a bad condition. So if I go up here to uh, 5.5 volts, again, it turns on. And that tells you that the, uh, the device is uh, triggered in its, in its off state. There's no longer any, any current draw. So there you go, that's how the part works. And about 5.5, then 2.8, and then you can set those. You can at least set one of them. The other one probably follows, but you can set one of them with that resistive divider. And uh, these devices happen to be triggering at those voltages. Okay, well, that was chip of the day, whatever this thing is, over voltage protection thing. It comes in a little bag. You get a header and uh, the PC board, but you can so you can solder the headers on to go on your uh, proto board. Uh, but yeah, they uh, seem to work as advertised. Uh, might be nice to protect things from over-voltaging things like batteries or under-voltaging things like batteries. <laughs> uh, yeah, batteries don't like to be over or under. A lot of circuits don't like to be over or under. So there you go.